if uh, we were being recorded yet, but <laughs> I think I figured it out. I just started the recording also. So good evening, uh, everybody uh, from India. That Thank you very much for joining uh, this webinar in the late evening. So today we have the guest uh, and uh, hosting by the Jana from the uh, SNHU. And, uh, and uh, today uh, she is going to let you know the complete information about the programs and the scholarship, the tuition fees, and how many intakes we, which we have. So feel free to write down your questions um, in chat box window which you can see in your right hand side and um, we will cover all your questions by end of this webinar in the in the meantime if you have some students um, uh, let us know so that we can send our documents to uh, jenna jenna i, I just uh, want that there is one file uh, one application which we filled yesterday only the online application and i'm not okay. sure that my team has forwarded it to you or not but I'll make sure that tomorrow uh, they'll send the documents to you uh, so that you okay. can um, get those students I-20. So Okay, fantastic. I will go over the process for sending in the documents. Sure, definitely, definitely. So, Jaina, uh, you can take it over from here, and uh, we will take it to any questions comes after the your webinar. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so I'm starting here on our main page, Southern New Hampshire University. Uh, it's a really long name, so we usually call it SNHU. And um, here's a little background on me, in case you're wondering who's presenting. Um, I'm the Director of International Recruitment for SNHU, and I have been working there for uh, almost uh, six months, so I'm fairly new. Um, and I'm in charge of the Indian market, so um, any Indian students would apply with my assistance. So a little bit of a background about SNHU. Um, we are a private nonprofit university. We were founded in 1932. Uh, we offer every level of study, so that includes uh, language training, um, undergraduate studies, master's programs, and we have one PhD program. Um, there's about 5,000 students on the campus. Uh, it varies a little bit, but um, 1,000 of those 5,000 are international. So we ha are really heavily represented on the campus, and we have students from over 70 different countries. It's a very diverse campus. So this is an overview of the selling points uh, or the reasons why students choose SNHU. The first one is we have innovative programs. I'm going to explain about some programs that SNHU offers that really other universities in the U.S. don't offer, like, for example, a three-year bachelor degree. Um, I'm going to go into a lot of detail about this later in the presentation. We also offer flexible credit transfer, so if students have started their bachelor degree in their home country, they can transfer credit and begin SNHU at almost any point during their studies. We have um, a 1 plus 3, a 2 plus 2, and a 3 plus 1. We have a strong business program, including a very affordable MBA or MS program. Um, and we don't require uh, SAT or GRE GMAT for our bachelor or our master's degrees. So that makes us very attractive. <coughs> we also offer um, generous scholarships to international students. Undergraduates, we offer up to um, $7,000 per year. And for graduate students, we offer up to $5,000 total. We have on-campus housing available for students. We have uh, a really nice small campus community with a lot of personal attention. Our ratio of students to faculty is 16 to 1. And the last thing is our location. We're located right in the heart of northern New England, about one hour from Boston. So students really like where we're located. A little bit about our recognition. What we're the most famous for is for being an innovative university. We have been ranked for the last two years as the number one most innovative university in the Northeast by US News and World Report. And you can see almost all of our recognition is around the idea of innovation. Our president uh, at SNHU is famous for thinking outside the box and trying to um, rethink the way that education can be presented to students, 
he's really focused on hands-on training and experiences and the idea that students can integrate their classroom learning with outside of the class learning. Um, and just to give you an idea of how far that extends, you can see here on the left is SNHU's president, uh, Paul LeBlanc, and he was actually recognized, um, I was going to say last year, and, um, but uh, I think it was two years ago now. Uh, well, actually, I see this article that I've quoted here is, was in March of 2016. The Obama administration um, in, on, in the Department of Education was looking for ways to innovate. Um, and this would be across the entire Department of Education, across the entire United States. And they looked for leaders in higher education who were kind of known for innovation and competency-based education. And they actually tapped our president, um, Paul LeBlanc, to join the Department of Education for a three-month uh, task force to help um, to look for ways for colleges to try new approaches with, um, for like unconventional academic programs to help raise the level of education across the US. So we're really, really proud of that. Um, and I think it kind of gives you an idea of what SNHU is known for. So a little bit about our location. Um, in the United States, we're located in the Northeast in the state of New Hampshire. Um, sometimes students get uh, confused because we're located in Manchester, New Hampshire, um, but that is not in the UK, it's in the US. Um, Manchester is the largest city in New Hampshire, um, and as I said, we're about one hour from Boston. Um, as you can see in the highlighted zoomed-in map, um, SNHU is also near a lot of um, natural uh, highlights of the United States. We're very close to a state park that's called the White Mountains, so it's great for hiking um, or skiing. We're also near an area um, that has beautiful lakes. Um, so nature and, um, uh, and beaches and the great outdoors are all nearby, but you're also one hour from the global city of Boston, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, so Manchester itself has about 110,000 people. It's a beautiful city, as you can see. Um, this is considered to be a small city um, with 110,000 people, but it's not a college town. It actually has its own uh, sports stadium, um, shopping, restaurants, lots of business. There are some uh, tech companies nearby, finance companies. Um, Manchester was named one of the 10 most livable cities in the U.S. by Forbes magazine. And it's a very safe place. Uh, New Hampshire is named the third safest state in the United States. Um, one of the things that we're really famous for in New Hampshire is that we are a tax-free state. Um, so that means that you can go shopping and not have to pay any state taxes or any sales tax. Um, so people come from all over New England, from Massachusetts, from Rhode Island, from Maine. They drive into New Hampshire to do their shopping. Um, so we're really famous for having great shopping malls and outlet malls. Just a little funny tip. Um, so again, just to show you what we're, we're near, it's about a one hour drive to Boston. It's a four hour drive to New York City um, and also to Montreal. So we're not too far away from um, Quebec and Canada. Uh, beaches are about 40 minutes away and mountains are about 40 minutes away. So we're known for being a beautiful naturescape. Um, in the autumn season the leaves change in New England and people will fly in from all over the country in order to see it. Um, so you can see how beautiful the leaves are changing there. Um, and as I said, in summertime, it's great to go swimming in these beautiful beaches. And in the wintertime, we have a lot of skiing in the mountains nearby. We do have four beautiful seasons in New Hampshire, so um, students get the chance to experience all of them. Um, and here you can see some of the kind of average temperatures. Um, we do get snow in winter. It's very warm in summer. Um, and then we get to enjoy the beautiful leaves changing and the flowers blooming in uh, autumn and spring. So about our programs and schools, um, right now we have a School of Business, School of Arts and Sciences, and School of Education. 
um, in about one year we will be adding a school of engineering um, but we do not have those programs yet in the meantime we have about 150 different program offerings and as I mentioned that everything from a two-year associate degree to a bachelor master's or PhD program these are our undergraduate programs available for international students um, so you can see we have quite a few different programs in business as well as um, arts and sciences programs so uh, some of our popular programs for uh, Indian students are our uh, international business degree, our marketing degree, um, our business administration degree. We have uh, computer information technology, which is also very popular, as well as uh, game programming and development. That's for students who are interested in doing uh, game, um, video game programming. We also have game art and development for video game design. Um, let me think if there's anything else. We ha do have environmental science and we have a very strong um, psychology program. Coming in fall of 2017, so coming up fairly soon, we'll have four new programs for bachelor students. That includes uh, aviation management, construction management, computer science, and homeland security. Our master's programs, we offer an MBA and an international MBA. Um, those are probably the two more uh, well-known programs. Um, the, that could be in anything from finance to accounting to marketing to um, technology management to social media operations and project management. Um, probably our most popular amongst Indian students is our Master of Science program in Information Technology. Um, students can do that program just uh, the way it is, or they can do a concentration in database design, or information security, or web design. So about our intakes, our undergraduate terms are semester-based and fairly normal. We have a fall start in September and a spring start in January. For our master's programs, um, it's a little bit different. We have five terms per year, so we do not go on a semester program. We go on a term program. Each term is 10 weeks, and there is a one-week break in between terms. So because of that, our starts are always rolling. So in the 2016-2017 term, you can see that we started last year in August, October, this year in January, April, and June. As we go forward, the next start will not be in uh, August or, or October, but in September. So they're kind of always uh, moving a little bit. Um, you can see the upcoming dates always um, on our website. and um, they are usually, you can tell them, for at least uh, six months to one year out. Our ESL program is offered uh, on, also on terms, but they're a little bit different uh, length than the graduate program. They're seven weeks each, and we offer uh, six starts per year. So I want to tell you a little bit about what sets SNHU apart from other universities. Um, we think that one of the most interesting things about SNHU for bachelor students is this program called Degree in Three. This allows students to complete their American four-year bachelor degree with the exact same number of credits, 120 credits, in just three years. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how to do it. I do want to say this is only for business programs. Um, the way that students are able to do the degree in three, they start in the fall, so we do not offer a degree in three start in the spring. When they come in in fall, they're in a cohort. So let's say, for example, they're studying marketing. They are going to their courses together with their cohort, but they're also having meetings outside of the uh, classroom setting where they're meeting with a faculty advisor who's helping to lead them in special hands-on projects and experiences that they do outside of class that integrates the learning from class 
and allows them to earn some extra credits. So this could be, for example, case studies where they're doing um, some sort of collaborative project based on a real life situation. It could be an internship or pre-professional experience. It could be um, some other sort of group project, a networking event, um, all sorts of different things. Usually when we are working on case studies or anything to do with companies, we're actually working directly with the company on these projects. So for example, um, we might be working with the company Target and they come in and meet with the students and um, some of their staff will explain about a business problem that they are facing and the students will work collaboratively on developing a solution and present it back to the workers from Target. So they really get that networking experience, they get the hands-on practice and the possibility of um, um, doing some real life work. One of the things that makes students really excited about this besides just the hands-on um, practice and the, the small group feel and the personal attention is that they also get to save money. They're only paying tuition for three years, and they're only paying living costs for three years, but they still get the same bachelor degree. So they're basically able to save 25% on their tuition and living expenses, and they're able to move into their OPT and start their earning potential earlier. The other possibility is that students who finish their bachelor in three years can stay for a fourth year and earn their master's degree. So we do have an add-on MS in business um, for an additional year. One of the other really neat things is um, we do have OPT options for students where they can stay and work after their study for a one-year period. Because OPT is offered at every level, students can do a, uh, their bachelor degree in business in three years. They can stay for a one-year OPT then they can add on a one-year master's degree in business and then they can add on a second OPT. So that allows students to get um, two years of work experience plus two degrees in just six years. It makes them really highly desirable to employers when they go back to their home country as well. Another unique thing about SNHU is about our master's degrees. We have MS or MBA programs. They have um, a lot of things that make them really attractive to international students. The first thing is they're efficient. They're usually completed in under 18 months. Some students finish in as little as 12 months. They're affordable. Depending on the number of courses the students need to take, they can be between $22,500 in tuition and $32,000. They're very easy to apply to. We do not require work experience. We will accept students with an undergraduate major outside of their degree, either in business or um, in IT. We do not require GMAT or GRE, and we do accept three-year degrees. Um, I'm going to explain quite a bit more about our requirements for Indian three-year degrees um, on a later slide. Also, our master's degrees are experiential. They do allow an in-depth study with a specialization. So if you do get an MBA or an international MBA, you can specialize in finance or marketing or social media or Six Sigma. We really allow students to drill down. We also offer internships and other pre-professional experiences that are built into the program. So back to talking about the bachelor degrees for a minute. We, as I said before, we have very flexible transfer options. So students who are looking to study, for example, they've already studied three years at their home university and they've decided that they want to get a US degree, they can transfer in up to 90 credits and receive a, a US graduate degree in just one year. That would be with our 3 plus 1 program. We also, um, and that can be in a business, like a BBA program, or in liberal arts. Those students, let's say for example that they stayed three years in their home country 
and studied, and then they came to the U.S. for a one-year uh, add-on to finish their four-year degree. We do allow those students to then add on a master's degree afterwards, um, and they usually can complete it in a one-year add-on. So that's also a really attractive option for students who are looking for a U.S. Uh, bachelor degree, um, and they haven't, they don't decide until after they start their bachelor degree in their home country. So those were some of the unique things about SNHU. Um, I also want to tell you, uh, of course, what the entry requirements are specifically for each program. So let's start with the bachelor degree. The main requirements are a high school completion, we look for students with a 2.5 GPA equivalent. That's the minimum requirement for uh, direct entry to an academic program. We do uh, occasionally offer provisional acceptance for students who have anything above a 2.0 GPA. We look for students who have a minimum of 71 on the TOEFL or 6.5 on IELTS, and we do not require SAT. The main documents we require to apply are the $40 application fee, the high school diploma, diploma and transcript, the English language proficiency documentation, either TOEFL, IELTS, we accept a few other exams as well like PTE, and proof of financial support. We also have students send a copy of their passport. So you will notice that we do not require a statement of purpose or letters of reference. If you have a student from an IB program who's applying, we do accept them and offer advanced standing credit if they have done higher level courses. <coughs> Excuse me. For the master's degree, we look for uh, a bachelor degree with a 2.75 GPA equivalent. Again, we do accept provisionally students above a 2.0. We look for a TOEFL of 79 and an IELTS of 6.5 and we do not require GRE or GMAT. The application documents are almost the same as the bachelor program. So this is the slide that's probably most important for uh, Indian applicants. This is for Indian students looking to study at the graduate level. We require that students have at least first division degree, and that means a cumulative GPA of at least 60%. We will accept three-year undergraduate degrees, but only from a NAAC grade A institution. If, oh, look at this. I have a mistake on my slide. We just changed this, so please listen carefully. For a four-year degree, we will accept up to 10 backlogs, not eight backlogs, 10 backlogs. And for a three-year degree, we will accept up to eight backlogs. So this is really important, and we always hope that our agents will double-check this before having students apply. Um, this is, this is a, um, a hard line. We don't, uh, if students have more backlogs than this, they will be rejected. The last thing is, is that students with uh, IELTS 6.0 will be placed in our Graduate Language Studies program before they can go into their academic program. If students have lower than a 6.0, like a five, band 5.5, they are not accepted. So a little bit about our ESL program. Indian students don't take our ESL program, but they are eligible to take our graduate language studies, which is uh, what we call advanced language studies. It's kind of like an academic English program. It only lasts for one term, so uh, for the undergraduate students, that means one semester. For the graduate students, it means 10 weeks. So as I said, to enter a graduate program, students need to have a 6.5 on IELTS. If they have a 6.0, they will be uh, entered into GLS before they go into their academic study. This has become uh, a question recently, or, or a concern amongst Indian students because unfortunately with the SEVIS changes last year in July, 
we are now unable to give an academic I-20 for GLS. So we are giving um, an English language I-20 for that program. So it becomes a little bit harder uh, for some students to get the visa. So again, just to talk a little bit about uh, the, require the entry requirements on the language for TOEFL. Um, this is for undergraduate. Um, if students are looking to go into uh, direct to program, they need to have um, a 79. Oh, actually, this is a mistake. I'm going to skip past these slides because I think that they are a little bit confusing. So our program costs. This is for the undergraduate program for one year. Our tuition for uh, two semesters, one year, is 30756 Our room and board, if a student is sharing a double room and having an on-campus meal plan, is approximately 12384 so with insurance, books, and fees, uh, one year cost is about $46,000. As I mentioned, undergraduate students are eligible for scholarships up to a maximum of $7,000 per year. For a master's degree, the cost really depends on how many courses the students need to take. So the minimum number of courses is 12. That's if a student has a full background in their area of study. If they're going into MSIT and they have studied IT as their bachelor degree, then they will not have to take any foundation courses and they will only take the 12 courses and it will cost $22,572. If they're going for an MBA, for example, and they have no background in business, maybe they studied uh, psychology as their bachelor degree, they will not take 12 courses, <coughs> excuse me, they'll need um, to take up to five business foundation courses. And so in that case, they'll have to take 17 courses. It costs $1,881 per course. So there is a range on the cost. Most of our graduate students live off campus, so I've given an estimate there for off campus accommodations, eleven to fifteen thousand um, dollars, plus uh, medical insurance and books. This would be the cost at the bottom, the estimated total cost for the whole program, not uh, just not per year. I'll skip the ESL costs because Indian students don't do ESL. Um, for our undergraduate and graduate language studies programs, um, again, these are just one term. So for a bachelor student, that would be one semester. The cost is 3195 For the graduate language studies, for one graduate term is 1881 About our scholarship program, um, all international students are eligible. They do have to apply applications up to 30 days before the start of the program. So um, within this PowerPoint, you can click here to go. Otherwise, it's right on our website. We require that students have uh, the equivalent of a 3.0 GPA from their prior study. So if they're applying for a master's program, they need that for their bachelor degree. If they're applying for a bachelor program, they need the GPA of 3.0 from their high school study. There's uh, two or three short essay questions as part of the scholarship application. Undergraduate students can receive up to $7,000 per year. In order to continue to receive it every year, they must maintain a 3.2 GPA at SNHU. Graduate students can get up to $5,000 total for their whole graduate program. So a little bit about the facilities and services that we have on campus. I'm going to talk about the uh, housing, the library, um, other facilities, activities, and services that we offer on the campus. First about the housing. 85% of our undergraduate students live on the campus, so we do have a really robust campus life. Um, 
a smaller portion of graduate students choose to live on the campus. It's usually a little bit more expensive than living off campus. Um, but if they do choose, there are graduate uh, housing options available. We, students who live on campus, we require them to use our campus meal plan. So they get a card um, and can eat um, on the campus in uh, our cafeteria or any of our other dining facilities or pub. Um, the choices for housing on campus can be anything from a dormitory to an apartment to a townhome. So there are lots of different options. SNHU is growing as a university. Um, a few years ago, we used to have uh, students on the campus, and now we have almost 5,000 students. We are um, investing very heavily in the campus and building new buildings that are state-of-the-art and modern all over the campus. So in 2014, we built the Library Learning Commons in the Shapiro Library. You can see it is absolutely state-of-the-art, modern, floor-to-ceiling windows, um, completely outfitted with technology, um, laptops, uh, uh, stations available for students, an IT desk, um, and study rooms located all over the library for students. It is a 50 million, I'm sorry, excuse me, a 50,000 square foot building uh, that cost $18 million to build and offers the most state-of-the-art innovative services and technologies. This kind of investment in the campus is going very strong. We just opened two new buildings within the last three months on the campus that are that match this one as far as uh, being completely modern and state-of-the-art. We have the Green Center, which is our student services building, where a lot of our different offices for student life are located, as well as our Gustafson Welcome Center, which is where um, career services and admissions um, are located, and students can avail themselves of all of these state-of-the-art locations. By the end of 2017, we will have a new athletic center as well as a new set of dormitories on the campus. This is our student center. This is where our bookstore is, our pub, our faith center. Um, we also have a coffee shop inside of here. It's a big hangout section for students. All of our student clubs are located inside of here. Um, and it's kind of like the central hub of the campus. Our dining center, as I said, students with a meal plan or without can eat here for every meal of the day. They have every kind of option you can think of. They have sushi, they have um, stir fry, they have salad, they have Mexican food, they have a grill, they have a sandwich bar. Um, they do have a global um, counter that offers halal food, at least one option every day. Um, there are coffee shops, there's a smoothie bar, um, so students really have a lot of options for where they want to eat. This is our current athletic complex, so we'll be actually adding a new athletic complex to this one, so we'll, we will have two on the campus. Our um, sports players uh, practice there, we have also, any student can use it, uh, including students in our language program. We have facilities to work out, Olympic size swimming pool, tennis courts, basketball courts. Um, we even have materials to play cricket. Our student activities, we have over 60 student clubs on the campus. The most popular for international students is the International Students Association. We also have student-led leadership and volunteer activities, um, as well as uh, university-led uh, international student services events. These are some of the other services that we offer, including academic advising, campus recreation. We have a, a learning center where they offer a certain amount of tutoring every week for um, any student who needs help with their studies. We have an alumni office. There are over 73,000 alumni around the world from SNHU. And we also offer uh, disability and diversity services for any students who need any sort of accommodation or advocacy. 
We have a career development center that helps students with resume and cover letter editing. We offer mock interviews, company introductions. Um, there are two, for undergraduate students, there are two um, absolutely amazing internship and career fairs offered every year where over a hundred companies come to uh, offer the chance for students to learn about um, work or internship experiences at their companies and students can network and do um, uh, short-term interviews with those uh, companies. We have a, a job board. Um, this is usually once the students enter the university they'll get a login for my SNHU so that they can use our uh, SNHU job board. Um, but we also have some information that you can see um, from the public at careeredge.snhu.edu. So some of the places where our grads have gotten jobs, um, GE, uh, GM, New Balance, Pepsi, Disney, T-Mobile, American Express, um, there are quite a few different companies located in the New England area, so there are a lot of opportunities. For bachelor students who are looking to do uh, a study abroad, so you can come and study in the U.S. and then take a semester and go study elsewhere at one of our partner universities. We have partnerships um, around the world, really, quite a few in Europe, the U.K., South America, and we just um, signed an agreement with a partner university in Japan. Our international programs, we have a lot of people working hard to support students. Uh, we have six full-time international admissions team, um, as well as uh, three people who are doing recruitment. We offer pre-arrival support on campus, orientations, activities and events, housing support. There is a monthly newsletter and um, very often we have workshops for students about immigration status, about getting a driver's license, about uh, how to set up uh, for OPT. So there is a lot of support for international students on the campus. Um, I won't show it to you now, but later when you're looking at this PowerPoint, you could um, go to this Vimeo site to see our international student video, um, and it shows a lot more about the campus. So about the application process, there's three basic steps. You have to complete the online application, pay the $40 application fee, and submit the documents. After everything is received, it takes about two to four weeks to process an application. I want to give some specific uh, details for how agents can help students to apply. So back to those steps one and two, they're fairly easy. We have our online application. Make sure you fill the one for international students. Then I want to remind you to use the applicant's email address. So this means uh, the student's email address, not the agent's email address. That's really, really important because if you use the agent's email address for more than one application, one will get canceled. So we need a unique email address. Please make sure that all the fields for the application are complete, and that includes date of birth, mailing address, and permanent address, educational history, etc. All the fields are mandatory. And then make sure that the uh, student identifies your agency on the application, because that's how we track your applicants. Then you can pay the application fee. Um, here's a link in order to do that. And then finally about the documents. On all of our materials, it says that the documents must be sent by mail. If a student applies without an agent, that is the case. When we are working with agents, we do allow them to send the documents by email. So you can see the email addresses at the top here. For undergraduate and ESL applications, we use intugdocs at snhu.edu. For master's degree, we use intgrdocs at snhu.edu. The documents we require are the diploma for the most recently completed education, a current bank document, it must not be older than six months, 
and it must have a notarized affidavit of support if the bank account does not belong to the applicant. The amounts we require are $44,000 for undergraduate, $36,000 for graduate, $13,000 for ESL, and uh, $22,000 if students are coming for one semester. Our English language uh, documentation must be scanned. That's a TOEFL or IELTS score, PTE score. Um, a clear copy of a current passport and the official or attested university transcripts. For Indian applicants, this includes an individual mark sheet, provisional certificate, and consolidated mark sheet. We do not require letters of recommendation, statement of purpose, certificates, or GRE. So here are some tips on how, what, when you're sending the documents what we need. For the transcripts and the diploma, we only accept official or officially attested copies. Um, and so that means uh, that you should be receiving those official copies in your office and you stamp and sign each page of those transcripts before you scan them in. That attests to us that you saw the official copies. Um, the, those transcripts must include the institution's grading scale. For the English proficiency score, you scan a copy of the IELTS TOEFL or PTE score, but the TOEFL and PTE score must also be officially reported. So please have your students go to the TOEFL site or the PTE site and officially report to SNHU because we do go and look those up. Um, for the proof of financial support, um, official document or letter from the bank stating the funds um, and the financial affidavit. If uh, the student is planning to bring a spouse or a child with them, Please let us know right from the beginning. We do issue the I-20 with the acceptance package, and so often what happens is we don't know that the student is planning to bring a spouse. We issue the I-20, then we send them the acceptance package with the I-20, and they say, okay, great, I got my acceptance. Now I need to, uh, I'm letting you know that I'm bringing a spouse. And really they should have shown $600 more per month on their bank statement in order to bring a spouse or $400 more per month in order to bring a dependent. So then we have to issue a new I-20. Um, so it's good to know those things from the beginning. So these are just some reminders. Don't forget, we will not accept transcripts from you that um, are scanned that do not have a stamp and signature on each page. So make sure, and make sure that both sides of the pages are scanned. Um, when you receive the transcripts, they must be the official transcripts. So that means that they have to be sealed when you receive them or may be forwarded to you by a NACES accredited evalu evaluator or from the Ministry of Education or Education USA. So that means that when you stamp those transcripts, you are affirming that you saw the official copies um, and we are trusting you to double check that they are not fraudulent. Um, also, just remember, we do not process the application until all the documents are in. And so that two to four week period that I gave you is from the time that we receive everything. So just a reminder, do not send applications past the application deadline. Our deadline is always exactly three months before each start date. So it's easy to remember. You can find it online or you can ask me anytime. Uh, make sure you use those student emails for the application, not the agent emails, and make sure that your agency is identified in the agency period, uh, field on the application. Last thing, we do have a mobile app that you can download on the App Store uh, for students to be able to see more about the university. So that is it for my presentation. I am going to get out of here and look back. I'm sure you guys asked some questions while I was talking that I could not see. So let me go back and look in the chat room. Um, if you have questions now, feel free to ask.
Uh, thanks, Jaina. First of all, it was a uh, it was a complete uh, training. I guess I I must say that you com you covered everything here, and if anybody go through the presentation, they'll have a complete idea about the how to process the applications and the requirement. We uh, do have yes, thank, a couple <laughs> thank you. We do have a couple of questions for you, and um, okay, uh, you can let us know. Um, the first question which I have for is that you mentioned about the um, grad and undergrad program. So you have only the two intakes available or the students can go for the uh, summer intake also? Um, so for the undergraduate program, we have two intakes. For the graduate program, we have five intakes. So graduate students can apply. Uh, I'm trying to find here. These are our graduate intakes here. Um, graduate students can apply to start. This is just an example. This year we started August, October, January, April, and June. So the next intake that uh, master students can apply for is June. Um, the application deadline for June is in March. After that, the next start will be in September and so on. It's starting every 11 weeks. Okay, that's fine. So uh, basically the five intakes are available for the grad and two intakes available for the undergrad. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, my another counselor asked the question um, about the scholarship that as you mentioned, international students can get the scholarships for the grad and undergrad. Is there any specific requirement to get the scholarships? Yes, it must be a 3.0 GPA from their prior uh, degree. So if they're looking for a um, if they're looking for a master's degree, then their bachelor degree they needed to have the equivalent of a 3.0 GPA. Okay. Also, you mentioned about IELTS requirement that they should have at least 6.5 um, to get the admissions for the grad program. And if they have a yes. 6, they can apply for, uh, through the, I think, the ESL program, um, something. So they can apply through yes, that so one. Yes, GLS. Mm -hmm. okay. GLS, Graduate Language. Graduate Language Schools, yes, yes. And but if they have less than six, they are not eligible, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and is this apply same thing for the undergraduate students also? The undergraduate students, it's uh, 6.0 to go directly to undergraduate, 5.5 for uh, ULS, going back a little bit for their undergraduate language studies. No, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. It's the same. 6.5 to go directly to study. 6.0 to go to undergraduate language studies. Okay. Lower than 6.0, not accepted. Okay. But again, you don't require ACT and SAT for undergraduate. Correct. Okay. Um... My another uh, counselor asked the question, is the internship provided is paid or it's unpaid? Um, it could be both. It could be either paid or unpaid. Uh, most of the times, uh, students who are looking for a paid job, they will uh, apply for a campus job. So um, we do allow international students to work in a campus job um, up to 20 hours per week. During the work uh, during the school period and up to forty hours per week during break periods, um, those campus jobs are paid. Uh, they're usually, you know, they're it's pocket money. It's not um, like a full time job, but um, that's how most students get their kind of paid work on the campus. Okay. Um, another question asked by Abby is that is. He's having a student who's having a 7.5 band and looking for an MBA. And his GRE score is 294. 
but if his GP is lower than 3.0, can this student be admissible? Yes, our, we accept uh, we accept graduate students just directly to academics if they have a 2.75 GPA or higher. But uh, if they have lower than that, they might be acceptable uh, with a provisional acceptance. But if the student did the student study in an Indian university, because we do not accept students who have lower than first division. Does that make sense? Yep, sure. And maybe you can let us know that is the student's percentage. If he's having first first degree, like sixty percent, then I think it's he can get that mission. Yes, exactly. So the three point oh is only for the scholarship. Okay. We do accept students lower than that, but they're usually not eligible for a scholarship. Okay. And uh, regarding the documentation, you mentioned that the agent has to verify all the documents and he has to stamp and signatures in all the pages to submit uh, yes. to uh, your team. So, uh, uh, like, the, again, we have to send a courier or hard copy of the documents or uh, I think the soft copy is enough after getting the stamping. Can, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Okay, um, my question was that you um, you mentioned that the agents has to uh, verify all the documents and email to you and your team. Yes. Uh, so uh, we also have to do the courier of this document, like we have to send hard copy also, or are you okay with the soft copy? Soft copy is fine. You send it to intgrdocs or intugdocs. I'm going to send you a, um, a summary. It's just a little Word document with a step-by-step -step process for applying. Okay. I'll send it by email after this so you can give it to the team. But they, they can scan and email the documents. They do not have to send a hard copy. The only time we require a hard copy is when the student applies with no agent because we rely on the agent to verify the uh, official copies. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, I think we have we only closed one hour, so I'll not take much time, and uh, I'll ask only one and two more questions. Uh, my one more question that you mentioned about the application fee is forty dollar for the grade and undergrade. Yes. So is is this paid for the agent or the agent every everybody has to pay this application fee? Um, everybody has to pay. Yes, sorry. Okay, okay. And um, uh, my last question is for you, for you is that you mentioned three months uh, deadline uh, for any programs. Do you think that uh, if the students submit, let's say, generally the uh, another partner university is having 45 to 60 days time uh, for their deadline for the next intake, do you see that if we submitted the documents uh, 45 or 60 days before you are going to accept them or it's hardcore deadline it's it's pretty it's pretty much a hardcore deadline um i can tell i uh, you know in the past uh we have been more flexible for undergraduate applications mm -hmm. um we have fewer international undergraduate students but we have many more graduate students. Um, we, we, basically, uh, last year we got quite a few Indian applications, a lot. And so we had to make these deadlines because we were getting so many applications that our team could not process in time for the students to get the visa. Um, this January we had a drop in the number of Indian applications that we had. So we did become a little bit more flexible with the deadline. But I don't want to promise you that we're going to be flexible in the future because it depends on how many applications we get. If we get, you know, uh, in, in one year maybe we'll get, you know, 1,000 applications. We don't have the staff to be able to uh, do them so quickly. So we try to stick to the deadlines. 
understood completely so you mean to say that um, uh, i think little bit uh, flexibility we can do for the undergraduate students and i because most of the universities they, they are now they're looking for to getting the more undergraduate uh, populations so definitely yes. um, we this year is our plan is also to get more undergraduate students for our partner universities great yes i i will do whatever i can to help you with undergraduate students because I actually work for the undergraduate department, so my uh, goals are always tied to undergraduate students. Um, we typically get many, many more graduate applicants naturally, um, and they take up a, a lot of our resources, um, and we want those graduate students, but it's just harder for us to be flexible with them. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, I think we already um, have the complete understanding about the programs and about the school. And, um, and the last thing which I have, I, I need to mention to you, hope you have received our email regarding the uh, the marketing activity which we are doing in 2017. And uh, I, I understood that uh, I think uh, SNHU is not able to join any event in India, right? Do you have any plan to come down to India this year? I, I'm, uh, I'm working on my scheduling now. I can't, I, the event that you sent me earlier this week, unfortunately, I'm already committed. You can see here on this slide that um, the areas that I cover. So I, I am already committed to being at an event in the Middle East um, at the exact time of the event that you sent me in April. Um, however, I am looking to see, even if I can't go to your uh, fair, I'm looking to see if I can make a trip to India and at least do some promotional activities in your office. Sure. Um, sure. But if, uh, I'm trying to work on that this week, so I will let you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think the Saudi Arabia event, uh, which is happening, uh, I think it's uh, starting from 12th of April or 14th of April, I guess. And our event is... Yes, it's that old. Yeah. yeah, and our event is finishing by 10th because a couple of our partner universities also joining that event in Saudi Arabia and they're coming down to the India and they... Because Saudi Arabia from here, it's only three hour journey. So our other partner right. universities are traveling from India to going there. But that is okay, you can let us know. But what I want to propose to you is that because this time what we are doing that we are doing the live workshop where uh, whoever are coming to our events to attending um, um, education fair, we are doing the live workshop where our foreign partner universities, they do the online webinar like you are doing right now. And um, whoever come to attend this webinar, they'll attend the workshops also. And that time um, you can take a participate to tell them that what are the programs and the same thing you can let them know also. Absolutely. I would be very interested in doing that. Sure. Thank you very much. I look forward for your plan in coming down to the India and um, we'll see you soon. Yes, that sounds great. Thank you so much. This was fantastic. Um, I will send you a follow-up email and as I mentioned, anytime, any questions you have, um, I'm here to answer them. Sure, definitely. Thank you very much, team, to joining uh, the late evening this call. Thank you very much for all, and thank you, especially thank you very much to Jenna to hosting this event. Yes, thank you, everyone, for attending and your great questions. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Same here. Bye-bye. Take care. Have a nice day. Okay, bye-bye.